Hey everyone, Kevin here, DaVinci Resolve Certified Editor and Colorist, and the wait is finally over. Today, Blackmagic Design gave us a nice pack of updates and launches right before the NAB, including the announcement of DaVinci Resolve 19. Now, all of us were speculating about this announcement, expecting like a new camera, more features to exist in Blackmagic and DaVinci 19, obviously. Actually, I saw this image yesterday in some DaVinci groups and forums, but now it's official and here is everything you need to know. But before we jump into it, remember to back up all your projects before trying DaVinci Resolve 19. Here we go. DaVinci Resolve 19 introduces a tremendous number of new features, including AI-based tools for tracking, noise reduction and audio effects, text-based timeline editing, the color slice vector grading palette, the Film Look Creator effect, and the Fusion U-Volume tool for advanced smoke, flames, and explosion VFX. Let's get started. In the Edit page, you can now use audio transcription to directly edit the timeline, detect multiple speakers, and replace text. To begin, right-click a clip in the Media Pool, navigate to Audio Transcription, choose Speaker Detection, and then press Transcribe. In the Transcription window, you'll see text assigned to various speakers, as well as timestamps. Click to change the speaker names and reassign dialogue lines as needed. Select sections of text and hit delete to remove associated video and audio in the timeline. Perform full or partial term searches and select replace to correct text. A trim editor is now available in the edit page. Double click an edit point or choose trim editor from the trim menu to activate it. Drag or use the comma and period keys to refine your edits and transitions, while observing frame count and placement of neighboring clips. Click outside the interface to exit. The edit page now offers a fixed playhead option, found in the Timeline View Options menu on the left side of the toolbar. With this configuration, the playhead remains static while the timeline moves during playback. This can mean less zooming and horizontal navigation when editing. You can now use your numeric keypad to directly enter timecode values for the timeline or viewer. Use plus and minus symbols to navigate up and down the timeline, or select clips and add or subtract values to move and trim them. The Inspector's File tab now features a streamlined way of handling audio file properties and skimming audio channels so you don't need to open the clip attributes. The Color page introduces another groundbreaking tool, Color Slice. This grading palette allows you to adjust properties of the conventional six vectors of an image. Red, green, and blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow, plus a dedicated skin vector. You can adjust the density, saturation, and hue of each vector. Saturation uses a subtractive mode, affecting midtones and shadows more than highlights. This allows you to achieve deep, filmic looks. Click the highlight icon in the upper left to preview the vector's key. Use the center slider to adjust the position of the vector slice relative to the color wheel. Adjustment controls across the top of the palette allow you to make changes to the image on a global level. The new IntelliTrack option in the Trackers palette uses DaVinci Neural Engine AI to achieve incredible tracking performance. In the Tracker palette, choose IntelliTrack, add tracker points to the image, and move them to trackable areas of the frame. Use the Tracker toolbar controls to track effects or stabilize an image. In the Motion Effects palette, the Spatial Noise Reduction tool has a new DaVinci Neural Engine-driven mode, Ultra NR. When you click Analyze, the Luma and Chroma threshold parameters will automatically adjust to best reduce noise based on the sample area. You can resize and reposition the sample area in the viewer to instantly update the threshold parameters and optimally remove digital noise from your image. 
the new node stack feature allows you to break up your overall node graph into separate layers while maintaining a single video pipeline. It's the perfect solution to grades with complex node structures. To activate node stack, open project settings, go to general options, and in the color section, choose the amount of node stack layers. You can choose up to four layers and customize their labels. Node stack layers will now be available to all clips in the project. Use the drop down menu or the dots above the node graph to navigate between the layers. This feature can be combined with versions and group workflows. Clip graph layers are applied sequentially when transferred between stills or clips. Right click on a thumbnail and select Apply Active Layer to transfer node graphs to one layer at a time. Other great actions like rippling and resetting can also be done on a per layer basis. When working in the RGB mixer palette, you now have the option to normalize channels as you adjust them. This means that the luminance of the image will remain constant, giving you some aesthetically pleasing split tone effects. In the effects panel, the new Film Look Creator allows you to design cinematic looks through the use of film emulation grading techniques and effects. To begin, drag the Film Look Creator effect onto a node. You will immediately see an underlying film look driven by over 60 internal parameters. As it's scene driven, it will work with any type of footage as long as it's correctly color managed. You can choose a preset at the top to get started. Use the blend controls to adjust the strength of the underlying color look and spatial film effects. Photometrically set exposure, S-curve contrast and highlights, and fade the shadows and black point of the image. The white balance and tint use chromatic adaptation to realistically shift a scene's light source. Use the skin bias parameter if the previous settings have oversaturated or unbalanced the skin. Subtractive saturation, richness, and bleach bypass offer different ways of adjusting image saturation, while split tone adds opposing color hues to the highlights and shadows of the image. The remaining internal effects imitate the physical aspects of film, affect light source halation and bloom, introduce grain texture, and add motion with flicker and gate weave. Defocus Background is a DaVinci Neural Engine effect that uses AI to simulate shallow depth of field in a shot. To begin, generate a mask of your foreground. You can do this within the same node or in a separate node, which you'll connect to the Defocus Background key input. Control Blur Amount, Saturation, and even Color to make your foreground subject pop. The Face Refinement tool has undergone some major improvements to its tracking and feature controls. It can now detect multiple subjects, allows you to fine-tune track points and interpolate keyframes, and offers more facial feature adjustment options. On the Deliver page, you can now disable specific video tracks when setting up a render job. You can now restore backups of deleted timelines. Click the Options menu in the Media Pool and choose Deleted Timeline Backups. USD tools on the Fusion page have received several updates. The new U-Texture, U-Texture Transform, U Normal Map and U Shader nodes give you the ability to import and manipulate textures directly in your USD scene without having to wrap them in a USD file first. These tools add flexibility and control to your USD workflow within the Fusion page. And now Fusion lets you more easily render realistic or stylized smoke, flames, and explosions using the new U Volume tool. This lets you directly load volumetric VDB files and easily control shading and field mapping. The new multi-poly tool makes rotoscoping more efficient by allowing you to create multiple masks in a single node. The list of polygon shapes in the inspector allows you to easily modify, organize, and animate shapes through one simple interface. The shape tools have received several updates. The new S-Text node allows you to add text directly into your shape-based node trees, and the new S-B-Spline node allows you to create B-Spline-based shapes. Also, all shapes now support animation motion paths, and the Shape Tool Style tab now includes opacity controls. The Fusion Tracker now defaults to using IntelliTrack, the new DaVinci Neural Engine Tracker. Using AI makes tracking easier and more precise, especially when tracking many points. DaVinci Resolve 19 introduces a powerful new way of applying Fusion compositions to your clips called Referenced Composition. This method allows you to reuse your work across multiple clips or even timelines. You create a referenced composition on the edit page by selecting a single clip or a stack of clips, and then select Create Referenced Composition from the contextual menu. This generates a Fusion referenced composition in the media pool. You can enter the Fusion page to start compositing, or 
Double-click the reference composition in the media pool to open it. Reference compositions can be linked to other clips in any timeline by selecting the reference composition, then right-clicking the target clip and selecting Link to Reference Composition. Any changes you make are applied across all connected clips because they are all referred or linked to the same composition. Reference compositions are an effective and secure way to keep your work backed up and organized, as they live in the media pool and will persist even if the original reference clip is deleted from the timeline. With DaVinci Resolve 19, the Fusion page has also received several other important updates, such as support for OpenColor I.O. 2.3, support for additional view LUT options and display transforms, and the already powerful Text Plus node has received additional on-screen controls that are available both on the Fusion page and on the Edit page in Fusion Overlay mode. The Fairlight page has exciting new features and effects that enhance your creativity and save you time. Let's start in the Inspector, where you'll find three new AI-based track effects. Music Remixer is an AI plugin that lets you remix music tracks to fit your show. Start by enabling the Music Remixer on a track containing music. Open the controls and adjust levels for vocals, drums, bass, guitar, and other sources. You can change a vocal song into an instrumental track with a single click. Remix the different instrument levels and even automate changes over time. Dialogue Separator uses AI to give you independent level controls for dialogue, background sounds, and ambience so you can refocus recorded dialogue and lower distracting background sounds while preserving the reverberant field of the room. When you vote Jamie Woods, you vote a real leader. I remember birthdays. Or decreasing the excessive ambience while adjusting background sounds as needed over time. When you vote Jamie Woods, you vote a real leader. I remember birthdays. This is perfect for improving location recordings in active spaces. Will you teach me how to surf? The Ducker makes it easy to get a good mix automatically by using the levels of one track to manage the levels of another track, without the need for keyframes or automation. In this scene, the music track is overpowering the dialogue. Just enable the Ducker on the music track and choose the dialogue as the source track. Then adjust the amount that you want the music to lower. Well, Use the controls to adjust the duck level and response time. Will you teach me how to surf? The real-time waveform display shows the level changes in the music whenever dialogue appears as the source track. All the track effects are available in the mixer and the inspector for the selected track. To choose which track effects are visible in the mixer, use the Mixer Options menu. Completely unique to DaVinci Resolve, you can now do AI-based audio panning in the Fairlight Viewer using IntelliTrack. You can automatically track people or objects and generate precise pan automation. To track an object, mark a range in the timeline and select the track. You'll find the tracker controls in the Fairlight Viewer. Here, you can enable auto-tracking and select the pan parameters you want to track. Move the tracker to the object on screen and start the tracker you'll get fast, intuitive results without the need to spend hours manually creating pan automation to match picture. Here, you can see the finished pan automation curve in the timeline. Or, open the pan window and use the new 3D perspective options to visualize the auto panning movement in relation to the listener. You can also do manual pan tracking directly in the Fairlight Viewer. When it comes to immersive audio, Version 19 offers improvements in MPEG-H and Dolby Atmos workflows, along with full support for recording, mixing, and delivering ambisonic spatial audio. Ambisonics is a full-sphere immersive surround audio format that can accurately represent the entire sound field around the listener. To begin, in Preferences, navigate to Video and Audio I.O. to Immersive Audio and enable Ambisonics. Now, you'll have access to the full Ambisonics toolset so you can create Ambisonic tracks and buses up to fifth order. Use binaural monitoring to experience immersive sound while working with headphones, or choose a monitoring format that matches your delivery requirements and speaker configuration. The Fairlight Ambisonics panner displays 2D or 3D spherical panning within the sound field, and can be used to position mono or stereo tracks within the field. 
Metering options include a single composite bar graph in the mixer and timeline and energy sonar or power displays. Use the space view scope to monitor high order ambisonic sources as they relate to other sounds and the room. Or enable 360 degree viewer mapping in the Fairlight viewer for dynamic graphical metering of either intensity or a sonar style view. There's even support for third party ambisonic head tracking and plugins. The Fairlight Channel EQ has been updated with real time analyzer and selectable slope for high pass and low pass filters. And sidechain control is now available for capable Fairlight effects and AU and VST plugins. We hope you enjoy exploring these and many more of the new features in DaVinci Resolve 19. Thank you for watching. So I'd like to know your thoughts on DaVinci 19. Are you excited? Are you maybe disappointed? Are you going to try Resolve 19? Leave a comment in this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I will be preparing some new tutorials and content around DaVinci 19's new features. See you on the next one.